Hi, in this video, we're going to cover the topic of frequency response. So to start, we need to remember that we can have DC circuits and AC circuits. Remember that in both of these circuits, we can use uh, Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law. We can also use uh, techniques like mesh analysis, node analysis, Thevenin, uh, super, Thevenin um, and superposition. And remember that in AC circuits, the voltage and the current varies with time, right? And, and so sometimes it's more convenient to us to work in the frequency domain uh, instead of working in the time domain. And we use phasers to go from the frequency and to the time domain and, and vice versa. But what is frequency response? Okay, so frequency response is the behavior of a linear circuit as the frequency is varied. Okay, so we're uh, looking at how the, the circuit uh, reacts to different, different frequencies applied. Okay, and in DC circuits, remember the frequency is zero. We just have DC sources. In AC circuits, the frequency is equal to a number, just a single frequency. In, in those AC circuits, if we vary the frequency that we uh, uh, apply, then we can, we can observe um, the behavior, behavior of certain quantity, okay? Um, in the case of the frequency response, whenever we do uh, a study of that, we always assume that uh, we have a sinusoidal source, okay? And we vary the frequency and then we observe uh, a certain quantity. A few concepts that we're going to cover in this video are transfer function. Uh, we're also going to talk about the difference between a log scale and a linear scale. We're gonna talk also about decibels and what are body plots. And the transfer function is used to describe the frequency response of a circuit, okay? And it is usually a ratio of two quantities, uh, for example, V out or V in. In the case of body plots, uh, it's just a standardized way of presenting the results of frequency response. And we're going to see a few ways of, of making body plots. First of all, what is a transfer function? So a transfer function is a ratio of two quantities of a linear network. Uh, usually is the output over the input. So in this case, I have Y divided by X and X is the input and Y is the output. We can have four, dif four different transfer functions. Uh, we can have a voltage gain. In that case, we have V out over V in. We can have current gain where we have I out over I in. And we can also have transfer impedance and transfer admittance. In this case, we have uh, output voltage divided by input current. And, and in transfer admittance, we have the output current divided by the input voltage. So in, in this video, we're going to give you one example on how to get a transfer function and we're going to focus on the voltage gain. So getting the transfer function is not a very complex task if you are good at analyzing circuits in general. So in this case, we have the output, the voltage output is the voltage across R2 and L1, so the resistor and the inductor, and V in, we don't have to even specify what is the value, okay, because we are going to look at the ratio, okay. So, also remember the impedance for our elements, the resistor is R, the capacitor is 1 over J omega C, and the inductor is J omega L. So, in this case, we can have a simple uh, voltage division to get our transfer function H. Remember, transfer function H is going to be a function of omega. And in this case, we're gonna have J omega L. This one is just R2 and this one R1. So it's going to be B out divided by B in, okay? So how do we find that? Usually, you try to find V out in terms of B in. 
And so in this case, we have R2 plus J omega L, these are in series, and then divided by the total impedance, right? Times V in, and that's our voltage division formula. And if I take V in and I put it to the other side of the equal sign, I get V out over V in, and I get my transfer function. And of course, we can substitute the values for each of these elements. We're going to leave it like that. We're going to work in symbolic uh, algebra and symbolic equations. We're not going to substitute any variables. So now, once we have that, we have some time to make algebraic manipulations in order to plot, uh, to make a body plot. Uh, in the case of, of when we're trying to make an asymptotic plot, we have to do some manipulation. We don't require as much manip manipulation. In the case that you want to plot uh, uh, the body plot in, in, in software like Excel, uh, you have to do further manipulation. So what happens is that, okay, so we have our transfer function, and this is the, the, form, the, the form that we got. We have to separate our, our equation into uh, an, a real part and, and the angle part, okay? And for that, you have to remember how to handle complex numbers, how to get the magnitude of a complex number and the face of a complex number, okay? Uh, once you work on that, you can get the magnitude of the transfer function and the phase of the transfer function. And I'm going to leave all of this manipulation for another video uh, so that we don't get this um, concept of a transfer function to uh, clutter with, with, with algebra and complex numbers. Okay, so, but do know that you do require some manipulation in order to make an asymptotic body plot, okay? So what are body plots? They are industry standard plots to present the frequency response. And what basically happens is that we have in the X axis, we have the frequency, but it is presented in a logarithmic scale. And we're gonna learn what is a logarithmic scale right now. A linear scale, you have 0, 10, 20, 30, and, and so on, etc. In the log scales, we have the values of 10 to the 0, and then 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, and so on. And these values correspond, you have 1, you have 10, 100, and so on. And, and they are equally spaced. Same, same way that in the linear scale, you have 0 to 10 is equally spaced from 10 to 20 and then 30 and so on. In the log scale, we're going to have an equal distribution of these values, the 10 to the one, 10 to the two, 10 to the three and so on. And one important thing to remember is that we plot the frequency on a log scale. We do not plot the log of the frequency. So we don't do log of F and then Get, we get a number and we plot that value. We don't we don't do that. Okay, we plot the frequency in a log scale. Most software you can set them up that you um, you use a log scale. Okay, and it automatically will display it uh, for you. The other concept that we need to learn about is the dBs. Okay, what are dBs? dBs are decibels. They're usually uh, used to measure the ratio between two two levels of power, and 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 for example, we have the gain. The power gain is equal to 10 log of P2 divided by P1. By P1. So that's where we get the definition of decibels. And in the case of the transfer function, we usually plot the magnitude. Uh, the magnitude of the transfer function in dBs, okay? So we use a 20 log 10 of the actual 
uh, of the magnitude. So we get the magnitude, we do 20 log that, and then that will be our, our dv. So why 20 instead of 10? Remember that p is equal to v squared over r. So if we do that, uh, that's 10 log 10 of v squared over r, and that's v out divided by, because remember it's p2 could be p out or p, and p1, p1 is the in. And so that's b, or even I can say uh, 1, that will be b1, b2 square, and then b1 square divided by r. The r's cancel, and you end up with, I'm going to write it right here at the bottom. So we end up with 10 log 10 of b2 square divided by b1 square. That translates to uh, b2 divided by b1. And then if you remember the properties of logs, that will be a 2 times 10 log 10 of b2 divided by b1. So that's how we get the 20 in there when we are using uh, ratios of voltages. So now, finally, what are the body plots, right? Uh, like I said, they are used to present the frequency response, and, and we can have two types of them. We have the magnitude body plot, and we have the phase body plot. They are usually presented in, in pairs, so we present both of them, okay? In the case of the magnitude, we have dBs, the magnitude in dBs versus the frequency, okay? So in the x-axis, we have the frequency, okay? Sometimes we use omega, which is the, the frequency in, in, in radians per second. So we have the angular frequency. And then in the case of the phase body plot, we have the phase angle in the y, and we also have the frequency in the x. So we're going to look at how to actually do this one. So for that, we first have to look at the transfer function. And we need to put our transfer function. Remember that I say we need to do some manipulation. Uh, how, why do we need to do that? Why do we need to manipulate? It's because we want to put it in, in, in the standard form or uh, similar to the standard form. And, and so this is the general form uh, of the transfer function. We're going to have a k value. So look at this. We have k, j, omega, um, and then we have plus to the plus minus n, and then we have um, we have the 1 plus j omega divided by c1 and, and so on. So we have the numerator, numerator, and the denominator. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Numerator, numerador, numerator. It's, it's tough for me. But so we have the, the top and we have the bottom. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys, I had to pause. But <clears throat> back to the regular programming, back to our, our topic. We have, uh, we have different factors in this equation, okay? We have the constant gain, we have zeros and poles. We also have simple zeros, actually zeros and poles at the origin, so this one. We have uh, also zeros and poles at a, a specific uh, frequency, a specific zero, a specific pole. And then we also have quadratic uh, zeros or quadratic pole. In our case, we're only, um, we're actually going to look at all of them, actually. And so I'm going to tell you how to, how to treat each of these factors in this equation. Another thing that is important to mention is that some t uh, to simplify, uh, I guess, the, I guess, the look and to simplify uh, the algebra, the manipulation, we can substitute S uh, for J omega. We put an S instead of the J omega and it will make it a little bit more com compact and, and, and 
less complex. So, but to make the body plot, this is the most important thing. To make the body plot, we need to plot each of the terms. So we, if we have a constant gain term, we plot that one. If we have a zero, we plot that one. And maybe that's all we have in our, in our transfer function. And so whatever we have in a transfer function, we plot them independently. We plot them separately. Uh, and then we add them graphically. We add them. Uh, and we're going to do some examples of that. And so the first thing is that we need to put, put it in a standard form. What do I mean by a standard form? It has to have a one plus something. And, and so in this case, I need to reduce this to look one plus something at the top, one plus something uh, at the bottom. So I'm going to factor out the R2. And when I factor that, I have to divide this one, right, by R2. So I end up with this at the, at the top in the numerator. <laughs> and then at the bottom, I factor out R1 plus R2. I'm going to factor that out, and that will be 1 plus, right, and then uh, j omega l, and then divided by r1 plus r2, okay? So why? Because then after that, we can actually call these uh, omega 1, and that's going to be our l over r2. Omega 2, we're going to put it as R L over R1 plus R2. And then this equation becomes something like that, plus R2. And then um, 1 plus J omega divided by omega 1. And 1 plus J omega divided by omega 2. Okay. Or you can call it C1 and P, P2. Uh, so that's one, one way we do it. Let's, let's do another example. So in this case, we have um, a 200, and then we have j omega, right? That's one thing. And then we need to factor what? We need to factor a 2 out of all this. If I factor a 2, I end up with 1 plus j omega divided by 2. Is that correct? And then I can also factor a 10 and I can say 1 plus uh, j omega divided by 10. Okay? Does that make sense? So now we can put 200 divided by 2 times 10 and then j omega uh, 1 plus j omega over 2, 1 plus j omega over 10. Okay, and so now it looks more like the standard form, right? Where we have the 1 plus j omega divided by something, and then 1 plus j omega divided by but another one. Okay, so that's the first step that we need to do whenever we, we want to make a plot, especially an asymptotic plot. Um, and see, it's, it's some manipulation, it's not a lot of manipulation. In the case that I want to use a, an Excel software or a graphic software uh, that cannot handle complex numbers, then I have to further divide into, and actually by hand, further divide these into uh, magnitude. So I'm just going to call it magnitude and angle. So we have to do manually that. So how do we? make an asymptotic body plot and asymptotic means straight lines that's what it means so it's an approximation of the real or the actual uh, response and we use a straight line the each of the factors is going to have um, a way of 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 plotting basically and so in the case of a constant gain, what happens is that we have, uh, we have to, in order to get the dBs, we do a 20 log k, and it's constant with frequency. So whenever we encounter that, it has to be constant with frequency. In the case of the phase plot, 
we have a zero angle, okay? And it's a constant with frequency, so zero in constant. And so what happens is that we plot that. In the case that we get a zero or a pole at the or origin, we start by plotting a line that has a slope of 20 degrees, 20 degrees per decade. Okay, what do I mean by decade? By decade, by decade we have, for example, we talked about the log scale, and so we have 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3. And so from this to this, that's one decade. From here to here, that's another decade, and so on. So in the case of a zero or pole at the origin, we have a, a, a line with a slope of uh, 20 degrees per decade, and that has a crossover of, of zero degrees at W equal to one, at omega equal to one. And this is, let's call this omega. And so we can also have, actually this one in our standard form, we had, j omega plus minus n okay and this n is this n so we have to the two we have times two so instead of being a 20 slope 20 degrees per decade it's going to be 40 degrees per decade okay and in the case of the angle we have a 90 degree angle that is constant with frequency and also we have an n that is different than one we have to multiply by that and this is all for a zero so positive slope for the zeros negative negative slope for the poles so in this case so if we have a zero that means a zero means that it's on the numerator so remember i have the transfer function and i have the numerator and I have the denominator. And if my j omega is here, then that's a zero. And if my j omega is over here, then that is a pole. Okay. And in the case of the zero, we do positive slopes. In the case of poles, we do uh, negative slopes. Okay, let me continue. So in the case of a zero that is not on the origin, we have this case, a zero, it means like that. That means that it's in zero in the numerator. We, we start at zero. Then we, at the corner frequency, which is this, we draw a line that is 20 degrees per decade. So it has a slope of 20 degrees per decade. Again, if we have a um, to the n, so for example, if our formula has something like that, one plus j omega divided by c1 to the two, then we have to do 20 times two. Uh, or if we have a three, we do 20 times three. And that's for the slope. Remember also, if it's a zero, it's a positive slope. If it's a pole, we have a negative slope. In the case of the phase plot, and this is a lot of talking and I wanna get to the actual plotting of things, but I need to still cover this. So in the case of the, the phase plot, we start with an angle of zero. So what basically happens is that we have our, our frequency, our corner frequency, in the, a C in the case of the zero, or a P in the case of the pole. And we have at that frequency, at that omega, we're gonna have a 45 degree angle. Remember the positive ones are for the zeros. We have a 45. And a decade before that, so the frequency divided by 10, that means if this is my C1, then this is going to be C1 divided by 10, and this is going to be 10 C times the C, okay? So at this frequency, we have 45. At the previous one, at the previous decade, we have zero, and then at the following decade, we have 90. We're gonna see an example, like I said. In the case of the quadratic zeros or the quadratic poles, it's similar to this, to this one, okay? Similar to this one, but now instead of having a 20 times n, we have a, we have a 40 times n, okay? 
Same thing for the angle. Instead of having a 45 or negative 45, we're going to have a 90. Okay, so we have 0, 0, 45, and 90 in this case. In this one, we have 0, 90, and 180. Okay, so this, uh, I guess, this slide can help you as a guide, like a summary whenever you you have to plot things. Let me let me erase everything. This slide can help you. This table can help you as a summary to remind you of things. Uh, once you already know how to do the things, this just serves as a reminder. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the actual plot. A constant gain. So the constant gain, remember we said that it's constant with frequency and it's a 20 log 10, okay? So let's assume that I have, I don't know, I didn't actually think of the value of the K, but let's, let's think that if I do 20 log in my number, then I get a, that is equal to uh, 60, okay? And that means that I'm going to have a line at 60. That's what I mean. That's my line at 60. In the case of the face, my line will be here. So we have zero degrees. We have zero degrees in all the frequencies. Okay, so that's how we plot that. And remember, we have to plot each factor. So once I know how to plot this one, once I know how to plot the next one, then I can add them up. So that's my gain. The case of a zero. So I have two, I have four plots because we're gonna do the zeros and the poles. And so in this case, we're going to assume n is equal to one. And this is a zero at the origin, okay? So zero at the origin, that means that I have a plus 20. And then remember we're saying n is equal to one. So plus 20 decade with crossover of zero degrees at omega one. So zero degrees at omega one is right here, right? And then we're going to make a, a line of 20 dBs per decade. And so that's 20 dB in one decade, another 20, another 20, and 20, and so on. And it continues all the way here. And it continues to the left also if I had more, uh, like a wider range of frequencies. And actually, oops, oops, radians per second. I have to modify that one, but you know. So now, um, yeah, disregard this one. E radons, so rats per second. Okay, you get the idea. So now, um, in the case of the phase, what happens with the phase? And that's a 90 and it's constant. So we're gonna have a 90 constant. And so remember that I said that for for zeros, we have positive slope. What happens in the case of the poles? So these are zeros. I'm gonna put here zeros. And these are going to be pole, poles. And so in the case of the pole, I have the same thing, but now the, the slope is negative. So I have a minus 20 dB per decade, and I have a minus 90, okay? So when you encounter, let's say your your uh, transfer function has a number, k, okay, I'm just gonna say a number 20, for example, uh, I don't know, something that gives you 60 degrees per day, 60 degrees, don't remember, it's up in my head, the numbers. So we do that, and then we have uh, j omega like that, then you know that's a zero, and then, or if you have and like that, or, you have another number, which is your k, and then uh, j omega, like that. That means that's a pole, and so you do the, the pole one, so negative slope. Now, what's going to happen in the case where we have a zero or a pole? Uh, and we're also going to assume some things in this example. We're going to assume n is equal to 1, and we're going to assume that our corner frequency is 10 radians per second. 10 omega is equal to 10. Um, so in the case of the magnitude, we start at zero 
and then in the corner frequency we start 20 dB per decade. So we're gonna do the poll. We said remember that our omega is equal to 10. So at 10 we're going to do 20 dB per second like that. And before that we have zero. So that's that's our our uh, our how we plot the zero in this case. And remember that I said that asymptotic means a straight line. So this is what it means. We have straight line and then we have a straight line. The real in the real case you're not going to have like that. In the real case you're going to have an approximation of this. So this is going to be something like that where this distance between here is going to be uh, 3 dBs, 3 dBs. Uh, but in the case of asymptotic, we just look at the straight lines, okay? In the case of the phase, remember, we have 0, 45, and 90. So, and 45 is at the omega. So, omega, we have a 10. So, omega, we have a 10. We have 45 at that one, and then we have 90. And then we have zero in the previous one and like that. Okay. And so that's how that's how we plot the the phase when we have a zero. Um, I usually like to start by looking at what is this, looking at what my omega is, and I put an a 45 in there. Um, then I say one decade before that it's a zero. So and a decade after that is 90. And also the thing is that we'd go 45 degrees per decade. So from here to here, it's 45 degrees. From here to here, 45. And that will make it 0, 45, and 90. In the case of the, in the, case of the pole, remember that I said it's almost the same, but now the slope is negative. So we also have 0, 0 dBs, and then minus 20 dBs per decade. Uh, in the case of the phase, we have at our frequency, we have a minus 45, and then we have a minus 90 and a zero, so something like that. And remember again, these are straight lines in the case of in the case of asymptotic. So 45, 90. In reality, you have something like this, more like this, something like that. It's not exactly. A straight line. Um, so that's the case of the zeros and the poles. Simple zero, simple pole. Now remember that if n is different than that, then instead of going uh, 20 dBs per decade, we're going to go 40 dBs. So we would go something like this. If we had a 1 plus j omega, and then we have a 10, and then we have a square, then we do same thing, 0, and then we have 20. I mean 40, and then 40, and so on. Uh, so 40 dBs per decade. Okay. Last one. Last factor. So we have a quadratic zero, quadratic pole. Um, remember the last last case that we did before it was n equal to two, right? But if we start with assumption n equal to one and see also again 10. In this case, the quadratic, we also have a zero, and then at the 10, we do 40, 40, 40 dBs per decade. And remember, we're still looking at n equal to 1, and that's n equal to 1. In the case of the phase, we're going to have a 90, so positive 90 right here, and then zero one decade before, and then 180 one decade after, so like that. In the case of the poles, it's similar, but now we go negative slope. So we're going to have here, and then at 10 we do minus 40, minus 40. Same thing with this one. We have we're going to have a 90 here, and then we're going to have a zero. Oops, a little bit, a little bit uh, not very straight. Uh, so 90 here. We're going to have a 90 and then up and then down right here and then like that continues like that um 
So those are the four factors. We have the gain, we have the pulse or zeros at the origin, at the origin. And then we have the simple zeros or simple poles, and then we have the quadratic zero. And so once you know how to do each of them, we can combine them in a in a in one single plot. So let's do one example. So here, first, remember that we have to manipulate whenever we don't have it in, in, a, in a way that we can identify quickly the frequencies, right? And in this case, I already did it. So I'm showing you that we have 100. That's one of the omega. We can call it omega 1, 100. And the other one is omega 2. That's going to be 10K. So if you identify that in the in the plot, you can see we have uh, 100 right here and then the 10k right here. And so we need to do each of these each of these terms. And you can see already, I, maybe you can identify. Can you identify what do we have here? Do we have k's, gains k's, the gain k? Do we have uh, zeros at zeros or poles at the origin? Do we have a zero or a pole at the origin? What do we have? Huh? Uh, do we have a simple, simple zeros or simple poles? Um, do we have any quadratic? Remember the quadratic, it has a, a longer uh, form of it. Okay, so in this case we have, let me just show you. Can, you can pause and take a minute to see if, if you can identify what we have. We have the gain K, right? We have, uh, we also have a, pole at the origin and we have two sim two simples we have one simple zero and we have a simple pole so we have four things we have quadratic so now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and do the, the gain so we do 20 log of log 10 of 1000 how much is that Pause and do it in the calculator. That will be a, that's a three. Actually, sorry, 20 times three. And the log log of 1000 is, is three. So 20, that's going to be 60. Okay, so how do we plot that? That's 60 dBs. So and remember the gain is just a straight line. Straight line right there. Okay, now in the case of a, uh, pole the green so we're gonna do the green one we're gonna do the the pole at the origin and remember a pole means negative slope and it's negative it's it negative 20 or is it negative 40 so I only see to the one right so n will be to the one if we had a two there that means that it's j omega square and n will be two but in this case it's just uh, uh, to the one and so n is equal to one. And so in that case, I have a pole, so negative slope, and it has to cross omega one at zero. So we have this one, and then we continue 20, 20, 20, and 20. In the case of this one, so it's a simple zero, simple zero. And remember that at a corner frequency, which is 100, it starts going up 20 dBs per decade. Why 20 dBs? Because our n, like we don't have a 2 right here, 1 plus j omega divided by 100 squared. We don't have that. If we had that, then that's n equal to 2. But we only have nothing. We have a 1 to the 1. So I'm going to do that one. And starting at 100, we're going to go 20 dBs per decade and before that is just zero. Okay. In the case of the pole, simple pole, this orange one, we have our corner is at 10 K. And so it's a negative slope starting there. So there and then there and so on. And then also a zero. So we have plotted each of them, right? Each of the factors. How do we get the final one? 
So you have to add it up, basically at each of the decades, for example. So at this one, at this point, I have 20 and I have 60, but it's 20 plus 60, so 80. So I start right here, so 80. And then at this second point, what? I have zero and I have zero and I have 60, so plus 60, so I have 60. And you can see that as long as this, this is constant, so I have 60 and then I'm going down 20. And then I, at this point, in this section, I guess, in this decade, I have 60, but I also have, I'm decreasing at 20 degrees per decade. So I go down like that. And then what else? In this other section, I'm also going down, right? Uh, another 20 degrees. So I go 20 degrees. So, but what happens in the next one, right? In the next one, my red line starts taking over also. And so if I have 20 degrees going up and I have 20 degrees going down, that cancels each other, right? So that cancels, that means that I go straight. Or if you want to just add it up, right? If you would like to add it up, at this point you have uh, 60 and then you have what? You have 20 and then you have minus what is this minus 60 so 60 with 60 they cancel and i left over with my 20 okay so the red is 20 blue is 60 green is minus 60 so 60 of the blue one minus 60 of the green one leaves me with only the red one now this the next step is similar where i had 40 60 and minus minus what minus 80 so if you do the math of that one you're gonna see that i still have 20 um that if that is if you do it math wise if you want to look at it as a uh, if you want to look at it as a positive line and then cancel in a negative line they kind of cancel each other out so i'm just leave, left with a constant now at this moment at this decade, I have another one of 20 degrees going down, okay? So if the red one cancels the green one, but who's going to cancel this orange one? Nobody, right? So now I start going down again, and I keep going down again and again. And it's going to just keep going like that. And so, so that's how we do the final body plot. So the final one for the whole transfer function is this the black one okay um it does take a little bit of time to get used to graphically adding signals graphically adding results or 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 lines um, so just think about that one slowly pause it and then come back we do the same with with the face plot okay so we need to look at what do we have for for each of these we have again we have the gain which what remember that one that one has a zero zero we also have uh, this one which is the green one remember what does that have it's a pole so it's going to be negative negative angle if i remember correctly that was a negative 90. okay what about what about i think i used red for this one Remember that at this frequency, we're going to have 45, right? So at this frequency, we're going to have, that's 100. And so I'm going to have 45. And one after that, I'm going to have 90. And then like that. And then one below, before, I'm going to have zero. So like that. All right. Yes, no, maybe. What happens with the last one? So at 10K, I'm going to have minus 45. Y minus because it's a pole is on the denominator. So it's a 10k. I'm going to have minus 90 and then one before 45, one after is um, actually why did I put 90? It's actually 45, not 90. So disregard this one, the yellow one. We have our green and then so 45. I don't know why I put in the line below. So 45 right here, 90 and then zero right here 
And the final phase, we just add those things, okay? <clears throat> so you can see all the way to 10, omega equal to 10, we have minus 90, minus 90, minus 90. <coughs> so minus 90 and zero. And then it starts going up. So I have a, um, one of the factors is going to make the phase go up 45 degrees. So it's going up 45 degrees. And then it's going up another 45 degrees. So it's making it go up. And then at this frequency, the other factor kicks in and it starts uh, decreasing 45 degrees, 45 degrees per decade. And then I come back to 90. Okay, so I have it like that. So now. Like that. So minus 90, this one, then this one. Why does this one keep going like this? So I have the green, which is minus 90. Remember? I have the orange, which is minus 90. And then I also have the red, which is plus 90. So you still end up with uh, this cancel with this, and you still up with minus 90 from now on. Okay. Um, so the final phase is the black one, like that. I'm going up. It's too ugly. Let me just keep it like that. And then going down, and then it stays. So that's how we make the body plots. And so um, this is the asymptotic. In uh, You're going to see the simulation in, in, in MATLAB right now. And you're going to see that it varies from from that straight, it's not that straight. So body plot in MATLAB, okay? So we can use the function body. That's how we just write it like that, body. To produce the magnitude and the phase plots of a given transfer function. And we need to put that transfer function in a polynomial form. What do I mean by that? So for example, the previous one. We had 1,000 times 1 plus s divided by 100. Now, see, I, substitute, I put s instead of j omega. And so we need to make it a polynomial. Remember a polynomial? What is a polynomial? a plus bx uh, plus cx squared plus etc. Okay, that's a polynomial. Um, and actually, it goes... Uh, uh, in backwards, so the higher the higher degree goes on the left side, but you get the idea. Um, so now, if I multiply this 1,000 times 1 and 1,000 times the s divided by 100, I get this one like that. The bottom one, I get you get s s squared divided by 10k. Uh, once I rearrange like this. Then we have the 10s plus 1,000, and in the denominator we have s squared divided by 10k, and so on. Uh, how do we set up that? So we put numerator equals to, and then bracket 10, which is this 10, which is this 10, and then 1,000, this one, and this one. If I had a higher degree, like in the bottom example, the denominator, then we add that. In the case of the denominator, we say then, and then we do uh, 1 divided by, so we take the coefficient 1 over 10k, and then space a 1, and space a 0, okay? Um, we set that equal to then, and then we use body, and then we put the numerator and comma denominator, and we can put the grid on also. So it's that simple. It doesn't seem like many commands, but you have to set up these correctly. Okay. Once you do that, you get this plot. So a figure window opens, a window for a figure opens in, in MATLAB, and you get these two. So we have uh, omega in the x, and we have dv's, and we have the face. And you can see that is it's the same example that we did. So we start at minus 90, it goes up 45, 
And then I think we had something like this, a straight line. We had a straight line all the way here, straight line all the way there, and straight line like that. So you can see it's not exact. The asymptotic plot gives you an idea, okay? The same thing with the same thing with the with the face plot. See mine the 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 straight line um, gives you an idea the asymptotic one and and if you actually go take a look at this difference from here to here and actually measure it, you will see that it's around or exactly it's going to be the three dv. Uh, 3db there okay so that's how we do the asymptotic that's how you do the MATLAB what about experimental and I just wanted to cover a little bit of tips for the experimental whenever you're doing experimental body plots uh, or experimental frequency response measurements uh, so the first thing is that you have to select an input voltage and and the input voltage that you select, you can uh, make it any value that you want, but you have to select an amplitude that is large so that you can get uh, good measurements, uh, but not so large that it's going to clip your waveforms at the output or not too large that is going to um, get distorted, get your, uh, your output distorted. Now, when taking the data at different frequencies, you need to change the step size. So, for example, if you're going from, let's say you're going from 1 hertz, so we're talking about frequency F, so we're going from 1 hertz to, I don't know, maybe 1 megahertz, 1 megahertz. Um, in and then you say you, um, you're going to pick a 50 hertz step size. How long is going to take you to get all the way to 1 megahertz? So 50 hertz, then 100, 150, and so on until you get to 1 megahertz. It's going to take you a long, long time to do all of those measurements. So what you need to do is space out your step size so in the lower frequencies you do smaller step sizes uh, largest frequencies you need to do bigger step size okay the other thing that you can do is try to space out uh, your points in a log scale so if you do the log scale and you say you know what i'm going to take points here 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 then you can go take a look what is that value in 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 frequency so for example you can say well this is one hertz and then this is three hertz and then this is seven hertz and this is 100 and so on um, and then 1000 hertz uh, so you need to space them out in the log scale uh, so now the last thing is that you can also take more data points so where where you think or where you expect that the response is going to change really fast uh, so you take more points in that area in that section in that range of frequencies and where you expect that there's not going to be a big change then you can you can take uh, not as many points of data um, so those are a few tips in the case of p spice we're going to leave that for a separate document or a separate video and 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 give you a detailed uh, i guess tutorial on how to do uh, a p spice uh, simulation that's going to be in a different uh, a different time that's all for this video i hope you have a better understanding of what are transfer functions and what are uh, how to make the body plots. And if you have any questions or you find a mistake in my video, uh, please let me know.